Somebody was asking me in Discord earlier today how to make beats and stuff, how to do drum beats and stuff, and he's asked me if I can give him a couple ideas. Uh, he asked for four on the floor, but I did a little bit more. Basically, four on the floor is really simple. You just got your kick on every number, so one, two, three, four. There you go. And then you got your hi hat. This is this is just simple. This is simple house music right here. I have a reverb on the kick because people like reverbs on kicks. It makes it sound deeper. Uh, I did kind of do it tastefully. If you guys don't like it, I'm sorry, but I did do it tastefully, okay? And see, it has like a nice girth to it. And he was asking about some variations and stuff. All right, so what you want to understand about house music is that all of these beats are writing on the primary. So there's one. The primaries are going to be one and three. So one and three are going to be your strongest. And then two and four are your second strongest. And the ones in between those are going to be the third strongest. If you want to do a beat that's so glued onto the grid like this, you need to, if you want to increase variation, go on the off beats. You see how this is? So it goes like this, one E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh. So whenever you're doing beats, you wanna land on the E's and the U's. Uh's. So I got the perks over here. Get some perks, get some toms. I don't really like toms too much. Uh, toms are kinda like a solo thing. I just kinda keep what's going on on here. It's a nice little disco groove. Uh, whenever you're doing beats, I would be careful of putting all of these on the grid. Whenever you put these on the grid, it sounds too robotic. And if you take a look here, these are offbeat and stuff. So it has like a nice little flow to it. You can go to the grooves and stuff. I really don't like the grooves. I like doing it, you know, on the grid. Practice doing it on the grid because the grooves, I don't think, help that much. They're like old, old ones. Sometimes they help, uh, help me out. They're good to have, you know what I mean? But I think I kind of get a good feel for it. So whenever you're, another thing, big tip that I'll give you on this is whenever you're doing your drums, stop looking at the grid and just focus on your ears. Trust your ears. Uh, try to put things off of it, you know, off of the grid and stuff. You know, just just listen to it and and get a feel, get a feeling, the feel of of the groove and stuff, and then you'll get it. All right. So we got a main one, and then we got one with more syncopation. By the way, whenever these are on the off off of the grid, the the e's and the uhs, and it has some stuff over here. What you're doing is you're creating syncopation. Syncopation is good to make the listener anticipate something coming, make things chaotic. So then it gets a bit. It's kind of like a riser. You know what I mean? The more beats that you have to a beat, the more you know tension that it provides to the listener. So as I go through here, that's the first step. Then the second step is. And that's whenever you're gonna have your lead and stuff like that. That's whenever you're gonna have your bass line and stuff like that come out is on that one with when it's not so busy. If you're gonna have bass lines and house music and techno and stuff like that, you need to make sure that your beat isn't that chaotic. Unless you're doing dark techno, they do this they do this crazy stuff. You don't want to put too many channels on a four on the floor beat. The pleasure from listening to four on the floor beats is that it's so simple that a listener could just go to it. It's like one of the beat, it's like the beginner music of EDM. You know what I mean? It's just very easy to get along. So you want to just play on that. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to show you how I do it. I already know I started doing house music. So just go kick, 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 and then uh, clap on two and no two and four yeah and then the open hi-hats are on here and now we got our little beat now I might play with this I like having my my claps like a little off I like playing with these over here this is a good tip right over here just kind of squeeze this bam over here use this there you go See, it creates this nice little tension here.
And it doesn't sound right at first because it's not robotic. This is a human thing. You know what I mean? Trust yourself. I'm going to add some variation. I'm going to go ahead and uh, highlight everything that's not the kick. And I'm going to go over here, mess with this random thing, and just randomize it. There you go. And now the velocities are random. So whenever you have velocities, they're going to mess with the volume of what's going out. So you're going to hear it. In fact, I should probably make this drastic. Maybe mess with this a little bit. Now the kick is drowning everything out, so go back and lift everything up. There you go. Just kind of feeling it out, getting the, getting a good groove for it. Um, I have a lot of different snares in here. You know, that's how you kind of like build it. Uh, we're going to make some syncopation now. So let's do some cool stuff. I got some perks here. Let me get the button. And this is what I do, man. I focus mainly on the E's and the U's at first, and then I'll do some other stuff. Honestly, it's really random. The more I get into this music, the more random stuff I try. Uh, so when you're at first, just do the E's and the U's, try to get some cool, cool beats. So let's see if we can try some. Let's get the toms over here. See, that's cool. Let's, you know, stick to those, but I like it whenever things get kind of syncopated. So I'm just going to go random right here. All right, so this one, this hi-hat over here, open hi-hat, is leading this, so it's creating this little tension. So I'm gonna move this a little bit. Uh, I'm messing with the velocity settings and stuff like that. Um, maybe I'll do this. Yeah, you know what, I'll just duplicate this beat. There we go, we got a nice little beat now. Let's get some samples and check check to see if our beat's pretty good. This one's a good, uh, these are some, some of the other ones. I was having some fun. So this sounds like some really cool minimal. All right, so we're just gonna listen to this. Check this out. So I want you to listen to the tension I'm creating through all these. So these are just basically, you know, two bar loops. What is this, it was one bar, what is this? It's one bar, and then this is a one bar. These are all one bar loops. So listen to the tension that I'm gonna create. That's four on the floor. Honestly, just four on the floor, you're gonna wanna like stick to the grid and then just deviate from it. Um, eventually you get to the point where you just start doing random stuff. You'll feel really comfortable doing it. Honestly, I would just do it. I just put the, you know, the draw tool and just ha just do it randomly, honestly. Just just do it random. All right, and next we're gonna do like dubstep. 
This is gonna be sick. I do dubstep currently right now. Dubstep is something called halftime. It's not a lot of drums. You don't want to have a lot of drums. It's mainly about like sound design and hip hop kind of does this too. So uh, let's take a listen. It's just a one and a three. It's just one, three. And this is, this is halftime. So now it's not on three, it's on two. It's on two now, so listen. Dubstep is aggressive. Let me turn that down. And one of the things that they do to build tension is they do this double time, quadruple time stuff, so. So what I'm doing is I'm playing on this double time field stuff and then I'm creating, you know, some syncopation on top of that, you know, to, to let the listener know that the next part is coming. The important part about these drum beats is that you're going to add some flair at the end of it to signify that something is coming up next. If something is not coming up next, then you're going to want to stick the beginning and the middle of it. And there's, you know, just how I stuck to the end of this. This is way deviated from over here. So let's let the listener know that something is coming up. And this is what's coming up. Honestly, this should be <laughs> my bad. Oh wait, no, it's over here. There you go. It was this one. <laughs> there you go. Just kick, snare, um, some stuff like that. You can you can do like some other stuff. Too. The way I set up these drums is that there's not any reverb on the kick. What I have here is like I'm using send to return because you're going to want to have the kick and the snare kind of be sent to the reverb. And then uh, this is my own little thing going on here. Uh, oh, this is really cool. Let's check this out real quick. Um, I got OTT amp delay vocoder on this perk right now. So if I play on this, there you go. So. Let's get a sample going, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a beat to it. The big thing when it comes to dubstep is it is very syncopated. Very syncopated. It's going to be very off, off the grid. See? It's off the grid now. And uh, the rides are on the quarter. And I kind of keep those on the grid. Ah, that's just dubstep though. There isn't really anything crazy on this. Trap, I was having, I don't do trap, so it took me a minute to get some beats down. Uh, don't get mad at me if these aren't the best. <laughs> uh, but I think they're pretty cool. And I'll show you some some stuff I came up with. Trap is like hip hop. It's gonna be mainly like a kick and a clap. The snare kind of plays a lot, plays a role into it. Playing on the four on the floor in the dubstep though, this is gonna be very very syncopated. So which which that means is that it's gonna be off the grid. It's gonna be on the grid on the one, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna deviate a lot. So if I go do this, I was doing some triplet stuff. So you see how it's not, this is one and two, what is that? Hold on. One E and, no. One and two and three, no. Hold on. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's halftime. I gotta do this again. God damn it.
I forgot to put the BPM change, but you get the idea. That's 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 that. So now it's trapped now, and this is gonna be like it sounds good at 160. That's the BPM you want to be at. Like I was saying earlier, all this stuff is gonna be very syncopated. Uh, things aren't gonna fall on the three. So there's one, three, and then one and a three. So you see, it hits on the one here, but it doesn't hit on the one over here. It's it's very syncopated. They got triplets going on. Control three, you get triplets. Do those. You know, kind of do some cool stuff with it, but let's take a listen. Yes, um, I don't do trap that much, so it may sound aggressively mixed, <laughs> but it's fine. It's, it's a cool little beat. There you go, a little hip hop beat. Very syncopated. Uh, honestly, it's just a lot of trial and error, and there isn't like a really a format for hip hop. Obviously, you can do tight beats and stuff like that, but just, you know, just experiment, really. It's all about syncopation. Always on the one and then heavily syncopated from there. I messed with a lot of velocity settings, if you see. Yeah, there's a lot of velocity settings here. Let's go check out another one. A little bit of the hi-hat, a little bit of the 808. The 808 gets kind of introduced in the trap. 808s are going to be used mainly for like parts when the song isn't too busy and it's going to focus more on the beat. Whenever there's more attention on the beat itself, that's where we're going to use the 808. I'm not really proud of this one. There's some other ones here. This is a, a trap beat. You take the hi-hat and you just go put it on 16ths and you go one, two, three. There you go. And you do it throughout the whole, the whole thing. This one has like an 808 glide, so listen. Hit the 808s just a little too much. There you go. I don't really do 808 glides. You gotta get, you gotta do a lot of practice to do the 808 glides, but I kind of did one. Would you go over here? Is you go to the uh, note expression, uh, and you kind of mess with these. See, I go over here, and then it'll show you like a little bar right here. It'll show you some stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, what I did though is I kind of did something different. I did the transpose. I guess I was having more luck with that. It just felt more freer than me. You know what I mean? I can, I can do it off the grid. You know what I mean? So you got this. There you go. And then you're going to hear. And so now it's more syncopated now because it's got these little hits in here. Now, see, these hits in here aren't signifying that there's something coming up. They're in the middle. You know what I mean? And the flare at the end is going to be the 808. It's like a, it's like a fill. But there's nothing here letting us know that something else is coming up. Uh, here's here's a, another one that's pretty syncopated. And you sometimes you don't need a fill. Sometimes you can just take the grid and just remove stuff, and it makes you know. It creates tension in the listener and, and it gets resolved here at the beginning. And that's pretty much it. And, you know, this just another one. And, you know, just got some hi-hats here. I, I did some stuff here. Honestly, it's a lot of trial and error. I can't tell you the right or wrong way. You just got to listen to it, feel it. Um, put some samples over it. You know, if you're doing trap, put some trap samples over it. And then you'll kind of like put the beat. You'll put the, the sample on loop while you're making the beat. And that kind of that kind of helps me a lot.
Yeah, so there's going to be a lot of things going on, so I'm going to mute the 808 because there's a lot of melodies going on. I don't want them to clash. Yeah, that one's a fun one, and then check this one out. Yeah, yeah, this is a lot of fun. Yeah, I love that one. And I was having a lot of fun doing drum and bass. Drum and bass is a lot of fun. Basically, drum and bass is like, Trap music. Trap music is all about syncopation. Drum and bass is about syncopation, but it's it's like very playful and predictable. So if you go over here, take a listen to this. This is a basic. So you got the kick and the snare on the two, but then the kick is going to be landing on the ant. So one E and uh two, so it's kick snare. One E and so it's the kick's gonna be in the and and then the snare's gonna be on the one on the four. Takes if you're gonna do hi hats, do the hi hats, and then I hit the randomize button, and then I just play with it, honestly. That's basically drum and bass right there. You can do some drum variations, and I got some hits over here somewhere. Where's the hits? Nope, they're not any hits. They're just, uh, you think it is hits. No, it's not. I have two snares being played at once. One has a really good transient, and the other one, you know, it's just a basic snare. It's good. It sounds good whenever it's distorted, because it's just like a basic snare, but this one has the character on it. A lot of people, when they do drums, they will layer snares. It sounds good. Hey, you don't even have to do any fancy layering. You just play them twice. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's syncopated. The the original rhythm, yes, it's not like four on the floor. It's syncopated, but it still plays with the predictability of the drum and bass. And, you know, this is our little tension riser, just like dubstep. You know, just double time. Taking away the snare and a layer of this, uh, I'm taking away the snare and a kick. That shit's sick. Basically, just gonna play with that, and then I had the 808 coming in here. And that, it's just a lot of fun, dude. Just, just do a drum and bass beat, and then just put an 808. I don't put the 808 right in the kick. You wanna let the kick play out first, and then the 808 will come in afterwards. This one doesn't have a really good transient. I think I did something to the rack. Let me see if I did something to, no, uh, I did. I did a little bit of a fade in here. Did you get rid of the transient? Nope, it's all, it's all good. So I'm just basically, Playing with the kick and the 808, and the 808 is going to come after the kick. That's why it just sounds good. You know what I mean? Yeah, so thank you for watching this quick little video. I'm barely going to edit this.
uh, like and follow for your stuff. And thank you for asking me how to do some drum stuff. It was honestly, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> I didn't realize I was this good at uh, drum and bass beats. <laughs> that shit sounds so cool. <laughs> There we go.